Okay, so we're going to get started here. Um, my name is Beth Pitao, and I am a career ed counselor at Central Westmoreland um, CTC in Westmoreland County. Um, so today what we're going to do is talk about abounding artifacts. Um, the artifacts, the PA readiness, and everything else that is being put on our plate in the last two years. So let me give you a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about who I am, career and college ready, what do, what do you know, um, define future ready PA index, the CEW standards, artifacts, sample artifacts, what the schools are using, um, and just some general resources for you guys. So um, with that being said, I kind of want to know who is in the room. Um, so who is a CTC employee? Who works at a CTC? Okay, who is a school counselor? A lot of you guys, okay. Um, any admin in the, in the room? Okay. Um, any middle school or elementary school teachers? Okay. All right, so, we get started then. Uh, who am I? I am actually a Penn State grad. Um, <laughs> I will give my age. I graduated in 1994. Um, from here, so this is one of my favorite conferences to come from because I like coming up here. <laughs> um, and it's like a three day little vacation from work and everything else. Um, I also went to IUP for my master's in counseling and did that in 2005. So I put 20 plus years in education. Um, I have been a group home counselor. I spent 15 years working with delinquents at a um, facility in Western PA called Adelphi Village, um, as well as their charter school. So I've been the alternative ed teacher as well, um, and then was a school counselor there. And then towards the end of my career there, I became the career ed counselor at Central Westmoreland. Um, it was a brand new position. They had just created it. And um, I, whether lucky or unluckily enough, um, got the job and have created about a nine year program now um, through the years with very little guidance at that time from when I started it compared to where everything is now career related. Um, personally, I have two sisters. I have my th uh, two nieces and a nephew who are my blood relatives. And I probably have everybody else's kids that are um, part of my regular world. And I have a lot of great friends. And my nieces and nephew actually finally made it up onto a PowerPoint. I love sports. I'm a reader. I'm a walker. Um, I love to go shopping. Um, and I love to be at the beach. So with a little bit of that information, why did I do that? Why did I give you who I am? Because that is what we're starting to do in terms of the evidence and the artifacts for our students in order for them to have these career portfolios. Um, what I have learned in the past created who I am today. Um, and it is going to help me, this, even these three days today are gonna help me in terms of what is my tomorrow, what's my next year, what's my next, I hope 10 years before I can retire and, and be out and, and do something new with the rest of, of the time that I have. So we need to make sure that our jobs today is to create what our students are going to be tomorrow. And that's what the career ready stuff is. Um, this experience is that we're doing. My experience at Penn State shaped who I am today. My experience working at Adelphi Village, one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. Did not make a lot of money. Um, worked with some of the toughest kids in the state. Um, had students who were in lockdown facilities. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, what those students taught me back then made me able to do my job today. And, and I do see some of those students still. And I, I just saw one the other day um, with her son, who is now an 11th grader at my school. And I held him as a baby because his mom got pregnant as a senior in high school. And I made sure she, she was, gra it was the last thing I ever did, I didn't care. She was graduating with her diploma. And now her son, 11th grader, power line program. So we are able to see some of our progress through the years. So we really want to make sure that with this, these evidences and the artifacts that we're doing, that we're making sure that they're meaningful. Um, we want our students to be successful in the future. Um, that's our job. So in your past, think about this. Can you name a person, a teacher, a counselor, a family member, maybe a neighbor or a coach who has influenced you? So I know it's the end of the day. I know I stand between you going home and to your room to rest before later tonight. Um, but will somebody share? Can you think of a person who made an impact? I will share. Um, Thank you. First, I'm a 93 Penn State grad. Woohoo! 
Yeah. Four years up here. Four years. Yeah, four there years you go. Here, <laughs> Probably saw you somewhere. Probably. Probably. Um, and on that note, and back to my Penn State years, uh -huh. um, I wanted to be everything and anything freshman sophomore year, and could not choose a path. Okay. It was all over the place, and it took my advisor mm -hmm. into my sophomore year to sit me down and basically say, what are you good at? Like, what do you love okay. to do? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I write, and I write often, and I think I write well, and he was like, then there you go. So I ended up with a degree in English and have never not had a job when I had, didn't want to work. So, awesome. So if he wouldn't have done, like, he would have just had <laughs> he might still be here. <laughs> he could still be here trying to okay. find out what I want to do. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. Any, anybody else? One more to share. This is what I do with my students. One more person to share and tell us. Do you know anybody who influenced who you were and why you were doing the job you do today? Thank you. Uh, my eighth grade English teacher, Mrs. Peters, she has passed. We have a relationship uh -huh. as I graduated. Um, but just her compassion and just being there, like, kind of like an open door, come and talk to me about anything. Mm -hmm. same thing. <laughs> yeah, cool. So even if you didn't share, there's definitely somebody in your past who made you are, who made you what you are today. There was somebody who influenced you, somebody who may have said to you, you know what, you'd be this, you should do this, or maybe you should try this. And, and going back to what you said, like, what are you good at? And that's what we're asking our students today, and it's even further down into the elementary years, and not just the middle school and the high school years. And then thinking about the same thing, like, do you remember an activity at school that led you to where you are today? Maybe you were that student in the eighth grade tech class, and you're like, oh, this is what I want to do. I could spend my whole day in this classroom. Do I really have to go to math class? Yes, you do. Okay, and those are the things that we want to incorporate into our daily lives and our students' lives. So you as an artifact, um, and we're going to kind of plow right into this and then go a little bit backwards. Share out, what are you doing with your students inside the classroom or outside of your educational responsibilities that is going to make an impact with them? So how about just a handful, maybe let's get three people. Who's going to share, what are you doing? that is going to impact them later. Whether it is in your classroom, or whether it's you as a coach, you as a parent, you as an uncle, you as uh, somebody. Go ahead. Um, we arrange monthly guest speakers to come in. Okay. So I think that just kind of helps to see what's out there. It might spark an interest. Mm -hmm. um, it gives them an opportunity to ask questions. Absolutely. Okay, so guest speakers. Anybody else in here bring guest speakers into their classrooms or into their school settings? Okay. All right, somebody else. What else are you doing that is going to give your students an artifact experience? Who's gone first? The lady will go first. Go ahead. Um, I created a portfolio contest to kind of jumpstart um, portfolio in our CTC. Okay. And so I went around and asked businesses to donate things and then each of the shops uh -huh. had to pick a top portfolio for morning and afternoon and all the teachers go around and look at the submitted portfolios. Wow. And it, it helps get them going on it. Mm -hmm. Now, so in your school, how many programs do you have? We have 10 programs. 10 programs, and every single student has to have a portfolio. Okay, anybody else at the CTC where their students have to have a portfolio? Okay, all right. The, I like the business idea of like having other, like, that they get something from it, so that is motivation. What were you going to say? Um, I also bring speakers and adults that take kids out. I work in a very small school district. Mm -hmm. So to get them outside the classroom, seeing what's out there. Okay. Colleges, but workforce too, like manufacturing, mm -hmm. business, hospital, or whatever. Just give them that kind of experience so they know, hey, it's pretty neat. Okay, and what grade level are you usually doing that at? Um, okay, all right. Sherry? So we have an alumni career day in our school, mm -hmm. and we come from a small district, so it's, I think it's important for our kids to see that, yes, there are doctors out there that graduated from our school. There are people in the military who are admirals that graduated from your school. So we like to bring it in as like an alumni. That's a cool idea. Anybody else? Go ahead. Oh, um, I work in a K 
team of six building as a school counselor. Okay. I've teamed up with our technology teacher with the sixth graders. We have them use iMovie to oh. make um, a video about their hobby, like a mm -hmm. favorite hobby, and then we have them relate it to careers. Okay. So. And that is definitely an artifact. Yeah, and it's <laughs> definitely. Fun to watch them presented and they add music and video clips and narrations. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, I work in a K to eight building. Okay. So we have a career fair that we do once a year. Um, we also have a parent and community um, career connections night uh, that we bring people in and families as well. And mm -hmm. then um, we now this year we went um, full full blown every week that each student from kindergarten to eighth grade has like a mentor. So we have um, a career class every Wednesday. We adjusted our adult schedule. Mm -hmm. for sharing. Those are definitely a lot of cool ideas and hopefully I'm going to remember them for when I'm finished or Sherry's going to write them down so she can give them to me when I'm done. <laughs> so career college ready. When I got this job nine plus years ago, like I said, it was a brand new position at our CTC um, and the, the administrator at the time had come across somebody like Mike Thompson, who some of you probably know, um, and some other people at the state level who started talking more and more about the career education. Um, and he's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I have no idea. So I just started researching and doing things. So um, the CEW standards are definitely something that have sprung forward in those nine years, something that most of us have to live by to a small degree as well as some of the teachers. Um, the 339 plans and the K-12 guidance plans have been created and updated, talked about through I think almost every single county um, within the uh, state of Pennsylvania. Now if you're a CTC, you might not know so much about what the homeschool district is doing, but you may have heard about the 339 plans in terms of Perkins, anything along those lines. Um, there are definitely more career-based classes that are happening at the middle school and high school, um, either led by a school counselor or a teacher. Um, in the county that I am, I know in some of our school districts, um, you know, instead of getting rid of or furloughing uh, one of their teachers, they're kind of saying, well, what about some career stuff? Let's get a career class in there. How about a nine-week um, career readiness uh, program? And we're using more teachers for that. The Future Ready PA Index, <laughs> brand new out, um, holds the schools accountable for career ed and is on the school report for parents to see. Um, so coming into this, there's going to be a little bit more information about the Future Ready Index because um, we never know who is going to be in our sessions. Um, so some of this material, it might be for the counselors repetitive, but it could also be something that you can take back to your teachers who haven't learned anything yet. Um, the CTCs, you may not have heard of uh, much of this yet either. I know my teachers at my building have no idea what's coming um, because eventually this is going to be sent off to them with my administrator, hopefully, um, so that we can at least show them, hey, this is what the homeschool districts are doing. This is what you guys are going to start helping with, um, and, and here's how we're going to progress. Uh, more education and business part partnerships are happening. Um, you know, if you, it depends on where you're at in the state. Are you at the college level um, taking your students? Students there. Some of you do the alumni. Some people are taking them out to a to a business. Uh, maybe they're visiting a hospital, or nursing homes, and things like that. But we need to have that. Go ahead. Um, our Jeanette Business Association meetings take place at the high school once a month. Okay. And we invite students to go to those meetings too. So it's a state of Chamber of Commerce, Rotaries, mm -hmm. anything along those lines. So the Future Ready Index. What do you know? So, what do you know? How many of you have heard of it before? Okay. How many of you have been taught something in your school building about it? Like you've had an in-service day. What if you're the one teaching it? Huh? What if you're the one teaching it? You're in the same shoes as I am right now. Yeah. So you had about as much information as I did to put this presentation together, which means some of you are going to share information that I probably don't know as well. Um, because being at the CTC, we don't necessarily have to do as much as the homeschool districts are doing. So I found this on YouTube, and I don't know if anybody has seen this, but this could be something you could use back with your um, schools, with your teachers, maybe even your parents if they're not aware of anything. 
And it's only like a minute. Pennsylvanians have been looking for a more comprehensive way to evaluate school progress and student success in the classroom and beyond. Using feedback gathered over three years and at the direction of Governor Tom Wolf, the Department of Education created the Future Ready PA Index. The Future Ready PA Index is a holistic tool that provides communities with a one-stop location for comprehensive information and data on student and school success. FutureReadyPA.org features a dashboard that highlights how schools are making progress across multiple categories rather than solely on standardized test scores. Finding information on your school is simple. You can also filter, compare, and find information on multiple schools, track school progress towards state goals, and view annual improvement data. A color-coded system illustrates student and school progress measured annually via collection of indicators. These indicators fall into three main categories. Statewide assessment indicators measure student performance on standardized tests, such as the PSSAs and Keystone exams. On-track indicators measure attendance and progress in reading and math. Lastly, college and career ready indicators illustrate how well students are being prepared for post-secondary success. Explore futurereadypa.org and find the information you've been looking for you seen that short video clip okay so one so it is something that you know if you're working with some teachers who you haven't trained yet like I'll probably have to show that to my teachers um, so that they get a little bit of a glimpse um, and there is more information out there online as well go ahead and if you didn't know Friday it went live so you can look at your school and okay information. okay by Friday so whether you want to look at your stuff, <laughs> keep our fingers crossed, right? So the basics, schools must report data at grades 5, 8, and 11 in Depends. Full-time CTCs do the benchmarks as well. Partial CTCs should work with their sending school districts. Um, and that's where I'm just starting to work out in terms of what we're going to be doing at the different levels. Um, artifact and piece of evidence are interchangeable. So depending on where you're at, you'll hear some people say, oh, do you have those artifacts? Do you have those pieces of evidence? And, and that's what you guys are doing. You know, the portfolio is a piece of evidence. You know, bringing in speakers and doing a reflection, that's a piece of evidence. Doing a resume is a piece of evidence. Your videos, a piece of evidence. Um, it's only to be collected from the current grade, so you're not supposed to go back and say, oh, well, let's make up from seventh grade. If you're in eighth grade, you're gonna do the eighth grade work. Um, you can exceed the benchmarks. I do know some of my school districts um, have, you know, sometimes six or seven different artifacts for the school year. Um, and some people are just doing, I need two for each school year. Um, the portfolio belongs to the student after graduation, and naturally you can find more information on the PDE website. Um, the gold paper, if you got this, um, this was some information that I had found when I was doing research for this and as I've been going through. So what I did is gave you maybe like one or two sheets of, like here are the basics you need to know. This is probably what some of your teachers need to know. This is what, what my CTC teachers are going to need to know. You know, we're in the 1920 school year, it, it counts. You know, we're, we're not back last year where we were trying to play catch up. Now every year, we really need to make sure that we're doing those different things. Hopefully all of your teachers know about the career education and work standards as well. Um, and then it also gives a little bit of information on the back of that first sheet in terms of, because the biggest question usually is, well, what about that kid who transfers? What do we do with them? Who is responsible for that? Did the school send the information? What do we need now that they came in April of the school year? Um, so this may give you a little bit of, of help in that department as well. And there's, I think, four more pages with that online. So future ready, when we think about it, students being able to take initiative, um, are they collaborators? Can they work with each other well enough? We are preparing, and one of the sessions I heard today, we're preparing tomorrow's workers. We need to make sure that these students are ready to go out into the workforce. We've been doing this for a long time. Now we have to prove we've been doing this. So whether it's the teacher or the school counselor, we want to make sure that we have them ready to graduate and ready to move on to the next step. Teamwork, um, I talk to my students a lot about adaptability. Sometimes I'll say that it's the flexibility of it. You know, I'm not talking to you about can you touch your toes. I'm talking to you like if the teacher says, hey, we have to hurry up and do this. Or your boss says to you, you know what, can you stay a little bit later? And you're like, sure, today I can do that. Tomorrow, no, I can't do that. 
Um, our students, they can't just be very rigid to their schedules. You know, are you capable of working with other people and some of those other people you're not gonna like? How are we preparing for that in the classroom as well? Uh, with 10 sending school districts at the CTC, our students are learning from the get-go. How do I start to get along with a person that I've never met before? How do I work alongside that person to fix this car, um, to scoot up the tower for the power line class that we have, to work on cupcakes in their culinary program? I've never met that person before. Okay, what are we gonna do? I, I, we have to learn how to work together. And creative problem solving. I know when I'm at the middle school level, the creative problem solving, the kids are like, well, what do you mean by that? And for me, I always say, are you the kid who thinks duct tape fixes everything? Yeah, okay, create a problem solving. You know, do you go out into the garage and find something that's going to work? Did your mom refuse to go to Walmart at 9.30 at night because you have a project due the next day? So you have to scramble around the house and find something to work? Create a problem solving. And we do it every single day. So why did this all occur, shifting the paradigm? Um, the reality, by 2025, more than six in 10 Pennsylvania jobs will require some type of post-secondary education or training. One of the key things we have to remind students, and, and some of you probably do this already, is it, post-secondary doesn't mean college. Is it a two-year school? Is it a four-year school? Is it an apprenticeship program? Is it on-the-job training? What else can they do besides that four-year school? The overwhelming majority of STEM jobs in Pennsylvania will require, again, some type of post-secondary education. For some of our students, the, the knowledge that I'm not finished when I graduate from high school is a little bit scary. So we have to make sure that we prepare them like, go and get a certificate at the community college. Let's look into this four-year apprenticeship program where you're going to get a paycheck. <coughs> you're not really in school, but you're going to get a paycheck, and then they'll start to see I'm doing and learning at the same time. 45% of uh, Pennsylvanians today hold these credentials. Um, unfortunately, there's that middle skills gap, as we've been talking about. They do require something, but maybe it's not four years of school. And then let's not forget about all the number of retirees that are coming from the state of Pennsylvania, and we can't replace them. So if you're at the CTC, we hear about this constantly. If you're bringing in a business owner, if you're bringing in the apprenticeship programs, it's a constant battle. They, we have phone calls every day to one of our 23 teachers, and they're like, do you have anybody that just graduated that can come and work for us? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes transportation's a big issue, and we can't get the student out there, um, and that's something that we're juggling with as well. Our economic future depends on having this well-education and skilled workforce. Um, we need to make sure that at every level, and this is, is key for everybody in the room, is that they have access to quality academic and tech ed, as well as opportunities to access interests, build skills, and identify and explore careers aligned to those. So you were already at Penn State whenever that, when that advisor was like, what are you good at? You know, how many of you have already asked your students, what are you good at this school year? You know, we, we do it every day. Um, some of the other things I like to ask the students when I do go into one of my 10 school districts is, what don't you like? What are those things that you would, ne and I ask every seventh grader that I have in class, tell me the job you would absolutely positively never do. And then I tell them mine. I'm not working with feet. I can't touch them. I broke my ankle. That's why I'm limping. Five months ago, I broke, today, five months ago, I broke my ankle. At this point, I was riding in, a hot, in an ambulance to go to a Pittsburgh hospital because of my ankle. It was, I don't know which was worse, knowing that I broke my ankle or knowing that people were going to have to touch my feet. I hate it. So I've managed. But so you need to know that as well. I might be great at math, but I, I, I can't spell. I might be really good at cooking, but I'm never going to climb up a 105 foot steel tower. Those to me are just as important. So we need to be doing that from K to 12, asking the question a little bit differently every year, but also making sure that the experiences that we make to find out those interests have a meaning behind it. And that we're not just saying, okay, we gotta get this artifact and we gotta put it in your portfolio, please just do it. So the creativity comes in there. Regardless of your post-secondary plans, you should be able to leave high school with a foundation in career education and work. This is where the standards and the artifacts are supposed to come into play. And that's what we have to try to remember instead of thinking, this is just another thing we have to do. Okay? Because those are, they're the ones who are going to take care of us in about 15 to 20 years. You know, where are they going to be at? The bank, the nursing home, the grocery store, working on our computers. 
so in terms of the career education and work art of artifacts, if you're not aware of what those are, we need to make sure that we meet the four strands of the CEW standards in each one of the grade bands. Okay? So here are our four areas, the career awareness and prep, acquisition, retention, and advancement, and of course, the entrepreneurship as well. Okay? Um, if you are in a CTC, who was my CTC people? Do you guys, have they said anything to you guys about this stuff? Have you learned them? Well, okay. I'm coming from a three years out of high school. It's my first year out of CTC. Okay. I know this. So you know them. <laughs> I'm lucky. You are. You, you probably are. And then how long have you been in a CTC? It's my second year. Second year? No. <laughs> okay. So depending on when, when you are at the CTCs, I'm not even 100% sure that if I go back and ask my teachers, how many of them know this? Okay, and that's the key thing. We, we're going to be working on the CEW standards with my set of teachers, whether they're getting it in their classes, because we have such a huge school at, at my building, um, it's hard to know who knows what. Some of our new teachers may be more aware of it than some of our older teachers who are ready to get out the door. Now are you saying that as, as like a full-time CTC student that you, your C, the CTC is responsible for the artifact collection and tenants reporting? Yes. Yeah. Um, to the sending district or? Well, if you're a comprehensive CTC, so if you also have, if they're a CTC and they're getting their math, science, social studies, and that, so when they have the students for a full day, that CT is responsible for it. I'm a half a day CTC, so my students come in the morning or the afternoon, then they go back to the homeschool district. We are not responsible to put into PIMS for that. We will work with the sending school districts but we are not going to be checked. Did I say that right? Did I say that right? I said that right. So, yeah, yeah. Most, uh, the, when you're going to be out to see and document and prove that you have the artifacts mm -hmm. is maybe when someone comes out to your school for PSA tests. Mm -hmm. Keystone. Keystone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know in my county, I'm not sure if anybody has been checked on this yet. I haven't heard of you. Yeah. So, has anybody in here heard if, if one of their schools has been? Yeah, Northern Lebanon. Uh, we're in Lebanon County, Northern Lebanon, last January. Okay. Uh, when they came in to check on the Keystones, they asked for artifacts. How'd that go? You don't have to tell us. I shouldn't have asked. Well, it's not my district. I don't, okay. I don't think it went well. Okay. Um, because, <laughs> well, because they were asking for the current ninth graders. Oh. They wanted the eighth grade artifacts for the ninth grade. Okay. And that would have supposedly only been two because the first year. Yeah, because we just started it. Two. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. You know. And everybody, yeah, I think I think within the next five years things yeah. will change. Like, hopefully. I know everybody is doing more now. Go ahead. I, I, I was speaking with a, a district at lunch that okay. had been on it. But oh. I did same thing during the Keystone time. but. What they were saying is that um, it felt as though maybe the people, the auditors, were not as familiar as they should have been. So that, okay, was very comforting. So. Yeah. The reason I asked about the CTC okay. is we're going to be in a unique situation right now where we send our seniors go to a full day CTC. Okay. Um, but the communication has kind of been like you guys are the artifact collectors and reporters um, but but when the seniors are they're not in our building at all in full-time CTC so then the question is you know that we're not collecting anything for the seniors well yeah so that's that would be my and I believe me I'm not the expert in this at least at this point um, but I would say as this when they have left to go there they're not counting anymore. Right. So if they collect other stuff because they're working on their resume or they have a job application, just in my personal opinion, I would say to the CTC, let's just keep it. Yeah. Like the kids should have something that's going to leave with them anyway so that they're ready to go out into the job world. Um, but the state, from what I'm aware of and what I've read, will not be looking at them as a 12th grader, but your school would have to know as the 11th grader, did they do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So a little clarification, the artifacts for CEW start 
stop and let her pray. Did I hear you say your yeah, spirit is go to I, Yeah. I think what I was trying to explain and it didn't make sense was. Well, it did make no, sense. it made sense. Just that they're the, in another location. The CTC yeah. for that last year for those kids, they still have to build a portfolio. Because when I come there personally or someone from my bureau, they're looking for a portfolio under the guidance mm -hmm. section of the 339 approved program okay. evaluation tool. So they're going to have their artifacts that they're sending school up through 11th grade, and if they're at the CTC for one year, they have to have a portfolio. So just separate. Mm -hmm. It would be separate. separate. Okay. So then I think I was kind of right in what I said. Yeah. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. If not, email her yeah. because she don't know more. <laughs> Who else had their head up in the back? What, was somebody back there have a question or come? Go ahead. The one thing that is a little perturbing to me is I'm the, the learning facilitator at our um, CTC, mm -hmm. but I also do co-op and capstone. Okay. And I also am acting counselor. Uh huh. Um, yeah. My background is special ed, not counseling, but mm -hmm. doing all these jobs. And my 10 sending district counselors are coming to me saying. How are we going to get all the artifacts? Because they know we're doing por portfolios. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my darndest to get mm -hmm. my kiddos ready. Yes. And what, uh, but then they want me to be the responsible party to send the artifacts back to them. And I think there has to be some onus on the student and on their building for trying to get some of it collected. Um, like you you are, and I think va various CTCs have various people who are doing different things or multiple jobs. At my school, at least, uh, we're lucky enough, there are two other counselors, and then I'm the one who goes out and does all the presentations and everything like that. Most of my homeschool districts, they'll talk to the other school counselors to get grades and attendance, and then I get everything else. Um, as, as Sherry, Sherry's one of my sending school counselors. But I think for you, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but immediately what I would say is that you need to talk to whoever your administrator is, and then you need to get to those counselors, those principals, and you all need to sit down to figure out whose job is what. And then you can figure out, because I don't know if each one of your 10 school districts all want the same thing, or if it's like they're trying to scoot everything off onto you. Um, I think that what you could come up with is a plan to say, you know what, the, the 10th and 11th graders that are in there and you said they're all doing portfolios, I will get you a resume and maybe do it in a Google form or something that can be uploaded to a student's account and then the student can transfer it over to the home school district portfolio. Most of them are doing a job shadow. Some of them are also doing applications and some of them are gonna have certifications. And I would maybe almost stick to these are the four things I will give you or that our students will be able to give you from the TAC because back at their home school district, they should have done a research paper and they've probably attended a career college fair. So I would almost have a plan in place and say, here's what I can do for you. And get your principal, your admin on board. <coughs> my personal opinion. Like e e <coughs> okay. Right now, all of our stuff is pretty much hard copy. Mm -hmm. but, and most of our districts have, mm -hmm. have career cruising, so we're trying to figure out a way to, to utilize some of that, mm -hmm. too. But, it is a little frustrating when they mm -hmm. kind of look to me for, well, what are you going to do? Like, I'm spearheading it all. <laughs> I would, I would go to your admin and, and come up with a plan and then I would send that out to the schools and then I would be very specific as here are the two or three things that I will give you and the home school districts also have to be doing something and, and, and they have to be doing something and usually it's the English classes so there's something there now them being at your school half a day it, there there is some some issue with it at times but one of my school districts what they did last year we had attempted that the, the counselor was going to come over and work with the kids in the morning but each time we had a plan there was a snow day um, so then she just kind of grabbed them at the home school but I had the list of 40 kids um, now they have a Google classroom and so that those CTC students can also go into the Google classroom when they go home and they can upload that kind of stuff as well so that's a possibility I hope that helped a little bit. Yeah, You're stuck. <laughs> well, I, but we're all stuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the uh, PDE website, there's a Career Ready Skills blue box, and there's um, some examples of artifacts at different grade levels. Have you shared that with those uh -huh. counselors? You know what, you know, artifacts, they're, they're just looking to me. They want you to do the work. They want me to get it back to them. But 
when the kids come to you, they're already done through eighth grade, maybe ninth and tenth grade. Right, we're looking at our eleventh graders. Your eleventh graders. Have, you know, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders at my school, but they're <coughs> wanting to get have me send all the artifacts back to the eleventh graders. If you email me, I can tell you what one of our district is doing with the Google Classroom. And something like that might benefit you. I, I don't know. I, yeah. So here's when we talk about the artifacts. Like our responsibility can be grades 9 through 12, specifically that 10th, 11th group. Um, within my school districts, I do a lot of stuff at the elementary schools as well. So we might be in that 6th, 7th, 8th grade band um, or that 4th and 5th grade band. So there's the four bands. We have to have the artifacts for each one and they have to address each one of the four standards, which always sounds like a whole lot of stuff. So in some of the school districts, they'll say, you know what? In sixth grade, we're dealing with entrepreneurship. Every sixth grader will have that done. So then in seventh and eighth grade, they don't do it. In seventh grade, they're attending a career day, um, and maybe they're doing it that year. And then in eighth grade, is you have to have the career plan. So depending on the school districts that you're working with, I have sixth graders come in to tour from one of my school districts. So when they go back, I'm lucky, the school counselors, they do an artifact with them. I just have to set up the tour day, but I'm not responsible for the artifact. They're teachers, and I've worked with them for numerous years, so having that relationship has helped me. Um, you know, in two of the districts that I work with, I do the career plan with them, and we upload it into their, into their portfolios because I'm actually in their building at times. Um, so it is just a, a give and take, and to see what, what is capable of it, and having a conversation. Um, so these are the pieces of evidence that will go into the Future Ready PA Index. So portfolios. Um, I don't know what each one of your school districts is doing. Um, I have 10 school districts, and there's probably 10 different ways that they're doing it. Um, so we have the hard copies, like you kind of mentioned earlier, um, and especially at the elementary schools at times, they're doing the hard copies. Then maybe in the summer there's a secretary or somebody who's uploading everything. Some of the school districts are doing that. Um, I have a school district that created their own um, computer folder system. Um, I work with that teacher, so we have a future ready folder, and each time we do something in the seventh grade, it kicks into that. The sixth grade teachers, it kicks into that folder. The eighth grade, um, she goes in maybe once a month. I help her when, when it's possible, and we kick it into that eighth grade folder. Um, and she spent a whole summer doing that, but it is their system. It works for that school. Um, of course, PA Career Zone also has um, one of my other school district uses they bought up into the, um, the portfolio system I guess you could say so all of their artifacts are with PA Career Zone um, I know Navion, Zello, Google Classroom somebody said career cruising um, it depends on what you're doing how many of you know what your school what your school district is doing how many of you had a say in what your school district is doing how many of you are responsible to check it? <laughs> okay, yeah. So much for having everybody help in that situation, right? Still for the counselors, um, it can be done and going back to like, you know, the people who are coming to check it, I probably think they have just as much questions as we do. Um, and it's gonna take time. I, I tell a lot of the schools that I work with, let's just give us about five years. Um, and then by maybe that fifth year, we're all gonna feel a whole lot better about it. Because um, it does take time. It was something that was very new. It's a, it's a wonderful idea. It's stuff that we've been doing, and we all need to figure out the kinks together. Um, and, and, that, and that takes time. So here are all those requirements again. So the grade eight benchmark, six pieces of evidence from grade six through eight, including an eighth grade career plan. Um, the 11th grade, so this goes back to what she said in, in the back. Um, those CTC students in 10th and 11th grade, how do we get that back to them? Um, our sending schools usually ask me for different things. We do have a PIMS secretary at our school who once the certificates will come up, that's gonna be up to, uploaded, and those will be into their PIMS records. The key thing with it is just having a conversation. Um, my school districts are still wondering how everything is gonna work out. We haven't sat down to get to that specific point of here's what we're gonna do at each school district. Um, so a lot of them have some plans in place, and then we get the contact, well, how can you help? and it's gonna take time. Um, for me, I'm one person. So to get to all of my school districts and do every other piece of my job, 
um, it, it can be a lot of times. And that's, I mean, and I'm only doing the counseling position. I'm not doing co-op. I'm not, you know, doing any of the other responsibilities. So if you're the person who's in contact with the CTC, you know, both, everybody just kind of sit down, come up with a plan, and ask them for something specific. Um, and if it's that resume, okay. You know, we have students who are at Skills up at Seven Springs right now. Um, those students, we could easily do an artifact with them when they come back. And it could be a reflection. Um, maybe they're going to win um, at district competition coming up in, de in December and January. We can find something for them to upload as well. So career artifacts, the good and the bad. Um, on the back page of your gold sheet, um, Here's the list of acceptable and not acceptable artifacts, okay? Um, and then there is another one, which I didn't have a chance to copy. I have one that I, um, RIU has used based off of the career bands. What could be done at the elementary level, middle school level, and high school level. So what's acceptable? A career inventory. The career plan is a must. That has to be done in eighth grade. You can decide how you want to um, write that up. Transition goals, the reflections, and journals. Um, the student who is going out on that job shadow, that job shadow, it, that's an event. They have to write up a worksheet of some type. There has to be pictures of some type. That's the evidence of it. Um, them going and say, hey, last night I went to um, the CTC open house and I signed my name on the, uh, you know, the attendance list. That attendance list is not an artifact. You know, them saying, here's what I learned when I visited those three classes. And, and that's three sentences sometimes. Yes? Isn't it that the IEP transition goal itself cannot be used for the progress monitoring must be used? I will be honest, I don't know. I stole it off of this piece of paper. <laughs> so yeah, if it says that on there, I probably just didn't type the rest of it. So the progress, having that chart of what's happening, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Research report, how many of you know somebody who's in the middle school or the high school who's doing an English paper <coughs> on a career? They've done a PowerPoint in the computer class. Um, in elementary school, maybe I know one of my schools does uh, an art project and they have to make a poster. Take a picture of that poster. There's your artifact. That worksheet that goes with it, there's the artifact. Yes? Um, it sounds like and I like how you, it sounds like you're giving students choice as to what they can kind of participate in. How, how are you, we currently assign all the artifacts to all the kids and mm -hmm. I it just, I really hate the one size fits all approach that we have currently I just had this conversation with Patty a couple so hours ago. So it sounds like you're not doing that, but then that sounds like a tracking nightmare to me in terms of what I can like, give, I will tell you that some of my school districts are doing a one size fits all. Every seventh grader is doing this. Yes. I, my, the seventh grade class that I co teach at one of our schools, every student does a PA Career Zone research paper, every student does a career plan for that grade. And then in the eighth grade, we do stuff with skills, we revisit the career plan, and she has another piece of paper. I believe that most school districts are doing a one-size-fits-all, that every student's gonna do a reflection because you all sat in the CTC presentation, and, and I have an example of that. Um, when I was talking to Patty earlier, one of the things that should happen in the next couple of years is that we do need to make it more individualized. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like so many things are happening, students are doing, but yes. then, Getting and it depends on like who's doing the checking. Evidence or, yeah, like who is checking and how. Uh, so we Go ahead. came up with a plan that has actually been really helping with that tracking. Um, we created a Google form that it, so that any teacher who does um, mm -hmm. something that the kids are going to collect artifacts, it's just a Google form. The kids and everybody inputs the exact same way. So it's their last name, their first name. They're great. They check. The teacher tells them this is uh, career exploration because we just visited the CTC. So they click career or whatever, and they click career exploration. They they write a one sentence thing of what it was just for this, and then then they also put their Google Doc. They also put their artifact in a Google folder for that 
point, but that Google form goes directly to a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they pick their, um, yeah, their graduation date. <laughs> so then we just, like, for instance, when we had the look here uh, May 1st or whenever they were collecting for our juniors and our pins, lady came to us and she's like, oh, the other juniors. I was like, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> and I just went to that spreadsheet and we just had to check to see. And since they picked which which strand they were they, they had artifacts for and which whatever, and we could just pick that kid who we said met every all the requirements and then go to their Google folder and, pull and open their Google folder and there's all their artifacts. So there's a and so we had the spreadsheet to thing and the really cool thing is that Everybody can do anything then. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, all of our kids might have gone on the CTC tour, but then our ag kids who had a speaker about um, water erosion job, whatever, and they wrote their artifact about that, well then they put theirs in. So some of our kids had mm -hmm. 15, 20 kids, because yeah. we got our teachers yeah. involved, and then some of our kids had just, but everybody the baseline, had something yeah. in every, so, I don't know, that really worked really well. I built one small high school with only 600 of us. So I don't know what it would be like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, you, did you have your hand up? Go ahead. We, we kind of had a collaboration like that too. We had a minimum requirement that every student for every grade had to do these certain things. Mm -hmm. And then teachers had for like a variety of different choices. Like if they had a guest speaker come into their class that was specifically related to the math teacher that taught this level math did some sort of budget project. So the way that helped, this is from when I was at the high school, the way that helped is that we had some kids that had seven or eight just in seventh grade, and I'm like, oh yeah, those kids are done for next year, so if they're absent in this one, it's not gonna be a big deal. deal. They had plenty, um, and it just, it helped me stress-wise, and then I'm, I, I can't trust kids to do their own <laughs> I would lose my freaking mind. I don't trust kids. I don't. You're probably not the only person who feels that way. <laughs> Um, so I had my own spreadsheet, and when the stuff came to me, when we had physical forms for a while, and when the stuff came to me, we had a spreadsheet that every teacher had access to as well, and when they did something, because you had to have one for every strand, so yes. I understood one, two, three, Yes, four. you do. Mm -hmm. So I would check, and I'm like, all right, this kid met that, mm -hmm. and check mark on the side, and I'd have the list, and it'd have every kid listed alphabetically for that grade, and it would go down the Excel spreadsheet, you just click yes, that they participated um, in this project. And then what it would do was highlight across so you can see right away these kids have four highlighted so they got it. These kids only have one. I need to do something then pretty much crunch time was in May. If they Absolutely. didn't have it, I'd be like, all right, I'm calling these kids down. We're doing a career thing. And I'd come up mm -hmm. with you know, Pinterest, get on there, come up with some sort of idea, call them down and do an activity with them one-on-one, -on -one, a lunch group, something to get them to make sure they have enough artifacts. Or I would do a desk with the teachers and say, can you please do yeah. something? Come on. I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Go ahead. We sort of did the Google form idea, but okay. through Schoology. So we have a course set up in Schoology that's called Project Life, which is the, the career project in the high school anyway. Okay. We have every grade level available in there, and they have a different access code to get in, so they can only see their grade level. Okay. So they have different things that they do. So and so anyone who does any kind of career thing, mm -hmm. they're an administrator in that course, 